I'm trying to look for my airplane out there. I can't see it. I do not like it when the jet bridge obstructs the view of the aircraft. Well, hello everybody and welcome back to my channel. Tonight, I am flying up to LaGuardia Airport and I am sitting in an A seat. The reason why I'm sitting in an A seat is because only A seats were available. So it's a seat on the left hand side. I'm expecting to land on runway four tonight, which means a good view on the left hand side. So let's see what happens. Come with me to LaGuardia. There's absolutely no way I can see my airplane behind me. I don't like that. I just get that jittery feeling every time I fly to LaGuardia. It never grows old. My seat today is 1A in the first class cabin. I'm fortunate to be on the left side of the plane. I'm less fortunate to be in row one because the jet bridge often leaves marks on the window for seat 1A, but that's all that was available and a great Manhattan view and approach is calling my name. 27 to New York's LaGuardia Airport. We'll be pushing back here in just about 10 to 15 minutes. Uh, we, myself and the first officer arrived a little bit late. We just came in, uh, arrived to the aircraft late. So it's gonna take a few more minutes to finish up our pre-flight pa paperwork and then we'll be on our way. Uh, once airborne, two hours and three minutes. We are expecting to make up some time with a good tailwind, so expect to be close to an on-time arrival. But again, we'll give you an update on our arrival time, the gate, and the weather once we're en route. Two hours and three minutes, take off to landing, welcome aboard. As the gate agent moves the gate F-14 jet bridge away from my window, some of the marks on the window are revealed. I think all airlines should replace the first row of windows on airplanes regularly. I fly for the view. We're about to taxi on over to runway 30 right for takeoff. Once we take off, we'll turn to the right and head towards New York City. Now, if you watch my channel regularly, you know that I fly this route very often, but tonight, something different is going to happen. And for me, it's a big deal. Every time I've flown this route, we have flown on the Milton 4 arrival, an arrival procedure to LaGuardia that begins over Pennsylvania, takes you over New Jersey, south of New York City, and then turns you to the north before you get to Sandy Hook Bay. From that point, New York Approach Control provides radar vectors to the active runway. In tonight's case, that would be straight into runway 4 with Manhattan on the left side of the plane. However, there's bad weather on the Milton 4 arrival route over Pennsylvania tonight, so we can't go that way. Instead, we're going to fly a route that will take us to the north. We're going to fly directly towards Boston. Once over New York State, we'll proceed west to east in the upstate region, then we'll fly roughly down the Hudson River towards New York City. So instead of the standard Milton 4 arrival procedure, we'll be flying an arrival procedure called the HARP 3 arrival. This is the first time I'm bringing this arrival procedure to my channel. Once we approach the New York City area, we'll rely on radar vectors from the New York Approach Control Facility on Long Island to the runway. We could land on any runway, but tonight I'm in luck because runway four is the active runway. This means we'll be flying over Manhattan, then making a left turn down the Hudson River and a U-turn to head over Brooklyn and Queens to land on runway four. That means that Manhattan will be on the left side of the airplane. Twice. We began our descent following the HARP 3 arrival over upstate New York under the control of controllers at the Boston Air Route Traffic Control Center. That's right, even though we're in New York, Boston controls this airspace. We start the arrival procedure over Rockdale, New York, where we fly over a navigational aid there. After Rockdale, subsequent navigational aids include Pauling and Kingston, New York. Once we get closer to the New York City area, the controller hands us off to the New York Approach Radar Control Facility, where we check in. New York, Delta 1027, 13-1, descending cross AZ at 8,000 with Kilo. 1027, good evening, LaGuardia, 10 minutes, 2992. 2992, Delta 1027. I had mentioned earlier that there was weather over Pennsylvania, and there's even some weather, specifically precipitation, here over New York. But this weather cell is much more favorable than the weather over Pennsylvania on the Milton 4 arrival. It's a smooth ride up here, too. We're now headed in a southerly direction, and we'll fly over the Connecticut Panhandle before we re-enter New York State. As we get closer to our destination, we're asked to descend further. Delta 1027, descend to maintain 4,000. 
The weather conditions have improved and we're able to make out the lights on the ground. We're still following the arrival procedure, but soon we'll be given headings by ATC to fit into the pattern into LaGuardia. Today, the wind is coming from the north, from 360 degrees exactly. From our position over Fairfield County, Connecticut, it would be most efficient to proceed toward LaGuardia Airport and follow Westchester County and Bronx County's eastern border straight into Runway 22, but we'd have a tailwind, so we need to land in the opposite direction on Runway 4. Delta 1027, final. Delta 1027. So, we'll be headed in a generally southern direction, then turn back around towards the northeast to land on Runway 4. All arrivals from the north will approach the metropolitan area from the northeast, joining other flights from the northeast, like arrivals from the Boston area. Typically, arrivals to runway 4 from the north will then fly across Westchester County near the Bronx, then down the Hudson River. But because runway 4 is also being used as the departure runway tonight, we'll roughly follow the Long Island Sound south towards the airport before we head towards the Hudson. 1027, turn right 220. Right We're now heading southwest over Long Island Sound. We're clear of the departure airspace for runway 4, but we still need to get on the other side of the Bronx to be able to fly down the Hudson River. The way this is achieved is for the controller to tell us to proceed directly towards LaGuardia Airport, then fly west. At LaGuardia, there's a navigational aid at the approach end of runway 22 that the controller tells us to proceed directly to, then fly west, or 270 degrees. 1027, direct LaGuardia, then outbound 270. Direct LaGuardia, then outbound 270 on the heading Delta 1027. This sets us up to fly right over LaGuardia Airport, then turn west, and the turn west will put us right over Midtown Manhattan. This is why I'm grateful for the fact that I'm sitting on the left side of the airplane tonight. We're looking at the New York City borough of Queens right now, and we're about to fly over the southeastern part of the Bronx. LaGuardia Airport is directly ahead of us, just a few miles away, but we'll have to fly over it before we can land there. We remain at 4,000 feet to allow VFR aircraft that are transitioning the airspace to fly below us. There are also many layers of airspace above us. For example, Newark Airport departures headed to the northeast fly over the area that we're in now, and above that are arrivals to JFK, and above that are higher altitude aircraft transitioning the airspace. Our heading and altitude are precise to help us avoid other aircraft, and we'll be given more precise instructions to fly soon. Ahead of us, and to the right over the Bronx, is the departure path airspace for runway 4. Since runway 4 is also being used as a departure runway tonight, when the runway is clear of arriving aircraft, the tower issues takeoff clearance to departing aircraft, and they occupy the airspace to our right. That's why we are where we are right now. But it's very late at night, and there are no departures, but we still avoid Bronx airspace just in case. What you're looking at here is the College Point section of Queens. We are really close to the airport right now, but we can't land for about another 10 minutes, all because of the traffic scenario based upon the wind, airspace, and runway configuration. If you ever see the airport you're going to land at and are still high up, chances are there's still some time left before touchdown, especially in complex metropolitan areas like this. Clouds blocked much of the view of the actual airport here as we pass directly over the runway 22 pier, which extends over the East River. Once past LaGuardia Airport, we have views of the western parts of Queens, and in the distance we can even see Brooklyn. This is the airspace that we'll be flying in in a few minutes at a lower altitude as we turn back around and land on runway 4. For now, I'm just getting excited for the view of lower Manhattan, as our nose is pointed directly towards midtown Manhattan. Boy, do I wish I was in the cockpit for that forward-facing view tonight. As instructed by ATC moments ago, we're flying a 270-degree heading after LaGuardia. We are over the northwest section of Queens, looking at most of the borough from this side of the aircraft, and we're keeping our 4,000-foot altitude as we head west. I'm glad that the weather broke and there are only scattered clouds below us so I can point out things to you. The view is only going to get better from here. By the way, if you like what you're watching so far, please consider subscribing to my channel. If you're not already among the thousands who have already hit the subscribe button, you'll find that my channel provides one of the most unique angles in aviation out there. We're approaching the East River. It's our second time flying over the East River as we flew over it when we were passing by LaGuardia Airport, but this time it's the part of the East River that borders Manhattan's east side. 
once past the river, we're over the island of Manhattan, specifically over Midtown Manhattan, and I'm happy that the left side of the plane provides this great view of lower Manhattan. We need to start our turnaround and can't keep this heading much longer because of traffic into Newark Airport ahead, so we're issued a left turn down the Hudson River. 1027, turn left 240, speed 180. Left 240, speed 180, Delta 1027. A left turn to 240 degrees places us on a southwest heading. This is the view I have been waiting for. We can see the West Side Highway as it leads to One World Trade Center at 94 stories tall. It's the tallest in a cluster of skyscrapers on the lower end of Manhattan Island. Beyond Manhattan is the New York City borough of Brooklyn. We're still at 4,000 feet. The airspace below us is being used for general aviation traffic flying up and down the Hudson River. Although tonight, with less than ideal weather in the New York City area, there might not be much traffic below us. We're flying in the opposite direction of landing, and the airport is behind us and to our left. We need to make a left-hand turn to get onto the final approach course. How far out we go depends on how many aircraft are on the approach. The majority of arrivals to LaGuardia Airport approach from the south, around lower New York Bay, and will basically fly straight in towards runway 4. There are generally a few airplanes, like ours, that approach from the north. I'm pointing the camera down for a special treat, the Statue of Liberty. She's 4,000 feet below us and faces New York Harbor. She looks so small from up here. Thanks to New York Approach Control for allowing us this view tonight. The many ships that you see between us and Brooklyn are waiting in New York Harbor for clearance to enter the port. There's so much going on up here and down there. Welcome to New York City. The city that never sleeps. In the distance, you can see the Verrazano Bridge, connecting Staten Island with Brooklyn. In a few moments, we'll be directly over the bridge as we turn to the left and make a complete U-turn. We need to fit into the straight-in stream of arrivals from the south, so the approach controller needs to assess the scenario. How many arrivals are there from the south, and is there sufficient space for us to fit in between arrivals by having us turn left to join the final approach course? We're south of Manhattan, with Brooklyn in the distance, and our left turn to join the final approach course will start over Staten Island. That's the point where we'll fit in between other arriving traffic. So, the point where we turn will not always be the same. It just depends on the traffic load. It's late at night, so we're not going to go too far out. The controller had his eyes on a gap between arrivals, and we're now going to fit into that gap to join the straight-in flight, so we're issued a turn to the left. 1027, turn left 130. Left 130, Delta 1027. This left-hand turn points our nose directly toward Brooklyn to join a left base leg to runway 4. Now that we're clear of the Hudson River's airspace, we're told to descend to 3,000 feet. 1027, descend at 3,000. Descend at 3,000, Delta 1027. You can see the Hudson River and the island of Manhattan in the distance. It's now time for us to get issued a turn to intercept the approach course and get cleared for the ILS runway 4 approach. So, 1027, 6 from Pat, 2 left 0, 7, 0, 3000, be established, but ILS runway 4 approach. Left turn 0, 3, 0, uh, 3000 till established, cleared ILS 4 approach, Delta 1027. You can just verify that's left 070 and you're still clear to approach. Left turn 070, Delta 1027, clear to approach. We're now going to get a speed restriction until Dennis, a place on the approach 6.2 miles from touchdown. 1027, maintain 170 knots, still Dennis. 170, still Dennis, Delta 1027. The Verrazano Bridge is below us as we turn left towards Brooklyn on a 70 degree heading. The final approach course is on a 44 degree heading, so as we approach the extended center line to runway 4, we'll turn 26 degrees to the left, our final turn, and then proceed on into the runway to land. To land, we need landing clearance, so the approach controller hands us off to the control tower at the airport. 1027, Tower 1187, have a good night. 118.7, good night, Delta 1027. Let's contact the tower. Tower Delta 1027 with you, ILS 4. Delta 1027, tower number 2, you're following the Nebus 320, uh, about six and a half miles ahead. Breaking in action reported good by 737. They also reported light to moderate turbulence on the way down with light rain. Wind 36011, runway 4, clear to land. Clear to land, runway 4, Delta 1027. Well, that was a lot of information from the control tower. 
Of all the videos that I've provided to you on this channel, the tower controller generally issues landing clearance and the current wind, but this is a special weather night. Keep in mind that weather had us fly a northern arrival procedure, so it's definitely not a typical night. The LaGuardia tower controller let us know what the braking action is. Braking action is a way of letting us know how easily a plane can stop on a runway. Tonight, the runway is wet, and a previous arrival to the airport reported that braking action is good, so there's no worries here. There's also a report of light to moderate turbulence all the way down to the runway, but I hardly felt anything on the approach. The wind is out of the north, and we're clear to land on runway 4. Again, Manhattan is revealed to all passengers that are sitting on the left side of the airplane. This time, we get to see both downtown and midtown. I'm so happy I'm on the left side of the airplane. We are fully established on the localizer and glide slope components of the instrument landing system. As we get closer to the runway, we descend on the glide slope all the way to runway 4. This is not the first time I'm bringing the ILS runway 4 approach to my channel. For the same view during daylight conditions, check out my video called Great Manhattan View to LaGuardia Airport with ATC. In this video, I'm also on a flight from Minneapolis to LaGuardia, but we fly the Milton 4 arrival procedure over Pennsylvania and New Jersey and approach New York City from the south, where we proceed north to land straight in to runway 4. You'll also notice that in that video, there are very few turns. So even though we land on the same runway, the entire approach to get to the instrument landing system for runway four is quite different in the two videos. We experienced so many turns tonight, but the route provided for the smoothest ride. We can finally see Midtown Manhattan with its cluster of skyscrapers, both old, like the Empire State Building, and new, like the many new super tall structures. Remember that if the wind is coming from the north or the west, chances are high that you'll land to the north or west, so always pick a seat on the left side of the plane. Even if you land to the west on the park visual approach, you'll still have this Manhattan view on the left side. And if you approach the city from the north, you're in for a double view of Manhattan, like the view you're seeing here. I just happen to get lucky because the Minneapolis to LaGuardia route typically approaches New York City from the south, but weather prompted the change tonight. But if you're coming into New York City from places like Boston or Toronto, you'll fly a route very similar to the route that I took you on tonight. Note that if runway 13 were to be the active departure runway, with runway 4 as the active arrival runway, we would have flown down the Hudson starting further north around the Bronx-Westchester border and would have had an even longer view of all of Manhattan from up close. The runway 13 departures would have been able to climb above flights arriving to the north by utilizing climbs that take them to the south for a bit and then to the north. There's always next time. I am still very satisfied with our approach tonight with its route over Midtown due to runway 4 being the departure runway. We're all set to land on the runway. The aircraft ahead of us that the tower referenced earlier is clear of the runway and there are no departures waiting to take off. In a few moments, we'll be on the ground after a rather complicated approach. We're flying very low now over densely populated areas of Queens, New York, and it will be this way all the way down to the runway. This is New York City, and there are buildings and homes everywhere. Ahead of us is 7,000 feet of wet runway, but with the braking action being reported as good, stopping this Airbus should not be an issue tonight. As we slow down, we're told to vacate the runway and taxi to the ramp. Delta 1027, turn right, Papa Bravo to the ramp with me. Papa Bravo, ramp with you, Delta 1027.
in the baggage claim area here at the D terminal. Thank you so much for watching this video. If you're not a subscriber to my channel, please consider subscribing by clicking on the subscribe button below. Hit the bell button, hit the like button, and I'll see you very soon in another video like this.